Hey guys, we're in beautiful Fort Collins, Colorado. It's a summertime. Uh, meeting some friends to check out their newest model. This is the Aerial Rider M Class. And I asked them, what does the M stand for? Because right behind it, we have a W Class. And really, the W, I don't know. I mean, this is a cruiser. It's beautiful. It's big. But the M actually stands for something mini. Okay, and you can see that. This is a compact electric bike. It doesn't fold, and as such, it probably weighs a little bit less. It's gonna be stiffer. They've got this really nice, kind of what I would consider a mid-step, almost a step-through frame. So we've got two pieces of tubing here instead of just one, and that's gonna give the bike a little bit more strength so it can carry a heavy rider or maybe just you know load some cargo into that optional front rack or the rear rack. This thing is child seat compatible. It's got pannier hangers on it. They said they custom designed this. It's even got some bungee cords built right in. So $70 for the rear rack, for the front rack, those are optional, but it does come with integrated lights. We've got this blaze light up front and it's mounted to the rack, which is really wonderful. I love that they have a tab for that because you can imagine, you know, normally it'd be down here on the fork, right where that fender is mounted and it might get blocked if you have a rack and it's full of stuff. Or if it was up high, again, if you load the rack up, it could be blocked. When you do this, however, you'll notice that I'm steering right now and the light is not steering with me. So that's one of the compromises if you get the optional rear rack. But if you don't, that light would be right down here on the fork, which is really nice. We've got these plastic fenders, but they actually have some aluminum alloy like runners in them. So they're, they're pretty sturdy, not as loud as some of the other cheaper plastic ones I've seen. They've got these rubber mud flaps. So, you know, if you go over a curb or something, or maybe you kick that while you're pedaling, not gonna be so much of an issue. Full length rear fender with a Spaninga, I don't know, this is like, NR9, I haven't seen this one. It's pretty neat to see how it's integrated into the fender and they both run off that, that main battery pack. And I just love how it's positioned right there in between the tubes. So if you're, if you're mounting this bike or maybe you've got a dress or you're, you're kind of bumping the frame, it's not gonna bump the battery pack. It feels very well protected. And then the balance of the bike, you don't have the battery way up high in the rear, it's low, it's center. Same thing with the mid drive. This is a Dapu mid drive and it weighs about 12 pounds. We were looking up the specifications earlier. That's a, that's a lot, you know, these mid-drive motors, they're geared, so there's actually like uh, a step conversion that the motor is spinning quickly and it uses gears to create torque and force. Up to 95 Newton meters of torque on this motor. Very impressive compared to something like a hub motor back here. It's going to put a little bit more stress and strain on the chain, but it's going to, empower you a bit more if you're climbing because we have a three-speed internally geared Nexus in the back. So nice to have three speeds. I've seen some other compact electric bikes where it's just a single speed. Um, and you can imagine starting or climbing, it's nice to have a little bit of a, an easier cadence, an easier start. So I appreciate that. 165 millimeter crank arms, by the way, normally they're about 170. So they brought them up just a little bit because the wheel diameter is smaller. These are 20 inch wheels by 1.75. And I love that they've got this reflective sidewall stripe. Um, it's just, it's a little bit more visible. The bike does come in two colors. We've got the metallic blue right here, but they said they also have metallic gold. Maybe it looks something like this. I'm actually hanging out with uh, the founder of the company, Arda, and his brother, Berk. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you guys are from Turkey, right? Yeah, yeah we're, we're from Turkey. It's pretty awesome. And now you're, you're based in California. The last time we met up, we were hanging out near Disneyland. Yeah, yeah we were of right? all places. <laughs> yeah, and you're touring the country here, yeah. you know, made a special stop so we could look at these two bikes. And it's just, it's wonderful to see them back to back and to be in a beautiful environment like this. Perfect for riding. There's trails all over town and stuff. All of your accessories, which we'll yes. go over in a yeah. minute. Uh, but Arda, it sounds like there was maybe a special story behind this bike, and, yeah. and maybe you, you know, you can tell me a little bit about that and introduce your brother. Yeah. So, um, I mean, as you can see, he is kind of a, on the bigger side, let's yeah, say. Yeah. And we've been making bikes for forever now. And the sad part is, like, he couldn't get on them that easily, and my mom also, she cannot get on them. Very like easily. the W class. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, my mom has one W class, and she. Barely even used it. I told you, like the first time that she ride it, she literally rode it into the shrubs and she couldn't get off of it. <laughs> so we're like, okay, um, there's some that we need to do on a new bike. So we just yeah. developed this one um, with a lower um, step on um, height, and then it'll be easier for people, shorter people, and also overweight people to um, control it. And yeah. actually also, people like who had some like operation or surgery for them, it's difficult to get on the bike too. Or people like me, you know, like. I was 183 kg, which is like 400 plus pounds. Wow. 
yeah and for me it was very difficult to ride bikes for longer uh, time what was it like I mean the difficult part on the one hand we were just talking about the standover height yeah, yeah. so this has a, and I've recorded this back at the website you guys the standover height that means like the lowest point on the frame like when you're mounting it you stand over and then I also recorded the minimum saddle height because some people just have shorter inseams yeah, so sure. that was the first hard part but what was the second hard part being like overweight or uh, the sitting position for most of the bikes you know like because people like me when we ride for over 10 minutes then you start to have like back pain mm. and we try to make a design which makes comfortable for riding you know longer uh, duration let me talk about that for a second okay so the W class, the cruiser, yeah. it has bigger wheels. Like that's a larger wheel diameter. It even has fatter tires. And so that increased air volume combined with this Springer suspension, combined with that huge saddle with the springs, that's gonna be more comfortable. Like there's just no way around it. This has a lower attack angle compared to these smaller wheels. Now these are very strong. They allow the bike to be shorter and maybe be stored inside an apartment or at work or something like that so there are some advantages but it has a higher attack angle so when you come into contact with a curb or bumps you, you feel it more like the wheel sort of falls into things however it seems like they've tried to balance that out even though there's no suspension fork here which adds weight and cost they've gone with the suspension seat post a little bit of a, a more of a comfort saddle it's, it's fairly active but a little bit more comfortable and those padded grips but the big, the big star of this whole thing, in, in my opinion, is, is this adjustable angle stem, the riser bar, and then look at that, there's five 10 millimeter spacers and then another 10 millimeter like sloped spacer at the bottom. So that's a really upright riding position. And when Berk was talking about, you know, back pain and stuff. So exactly. this bike, how do you set it up? Can you show me like adjust the, adjust the stem and stuff? And yeah, sure, like uh, generally I make the saddle a little bit like you know, a little bit lower, lower uh -huh. yeah. yeah, and generally I make uh, the stem at this position, so I generally have like a very upright riding position, yeah. So I can easily ride over 30 minutes, 40 minutes when I'm going for the work for the commute. So that helped me a lot because in this way I was able to do exercise at this like one hour every day, yeah, and it helped me lose weight, get more active. How much did you lose? Uh, it's like 63 kg, which is, I guess, 130, wow. 140 pounds. That's, uh, that time I weigh 135 pounds. So, I mean, so congratulations. I you you dropped <laughs> like a whole person. Yeah, that's I mean, true. That's, congr I mean, congratulations. Thanks, thanks, yeah. And I also, I we were talking about this earlier. This is a class two electric bike, meaning it ships 20 miles per hour and it yeah. has a throttle. Yes, throttle. Tell me how you use the throttle. Was that, you know, what's the... Oh. Uh, I normally don't want to use the throttle all the time, but sometimes I get, you know, tired or when I try to climb the, you know, hills, sometimes I need like the full boost and at those times throttles becomes like very handy. Yeah. And it's a twist throttle. Yes. So. Easy to use and a twist. This is an internally geared hub, so I can shift the gears right now if I forget yes. and it, it doesn't hurt the drivetrain. Exactly like that. So sometimes when you try to climb uphill from a steady position, yeah. this is very comfortable, especially in the mid drives because you need to lower the gear if you have a derailleur and it's a little hard to how to say get it yeah but in this one you can sh shift the gears in any position okay so this is thank you very much Beric. i'm going to jump back in and talk about some of the other features so you know we mentioned 95 newton meters of torque at that mid drive that is that is one of the higher torque motors that's out there it uses a combination of mostly torque sensing but also a little bit of cadence so it's pretty smooth and natural it doesn't start unless you actually want to go i appreciate that the throttle on this bike only works at level zero so you do have to press the buttons a little bit more to get the throttle going but it's kind of a safety thing when you're ready you just go up to pedal assist there are six levels of that uh, the motor's rated at 500 watts nominal and it peaks out above a thousand which is quite good you can see on this side it says dapu so that's their 500 watt uh, mid drive it does not have shift detection like some of the fancier like bosch that's one of the things they're really known for however there's only one chain ring and one sprocket so the shifting all happens inside that internally geared hub and it's a little bit more protected let's imagine you go to a bike rack or something you know if the bike tips over there's no derailleur hanging down as we see over there, which could get bumped a little bit more easily. 
Now, I like that both of their bikes that we're looking at today, they have the hydraulic disc brakes. I was really impressed to see 160 millimeter and then 180 millimeter on the M class. That's that's almost like overkill, but I was talking to Arda and he's like, well, you know, if you have the child seat or something, the bike can actually be you know, unlocked and you can go above 20 miles per hour or you can go below 20 miles per hour. So there's, you know, technically this becomes almost like a class three up to 28 mile per hour if you unlocked it, which for a compact bike, that's pretty rare. I haven't seen a lot of compact bikes with a throttle, with a mid-drive that go above 20 miles per hour. I'm not sure I would really want to go too much faster than 20 because the smaller wheels can kind of, you know, they're just, they're not as steady. You don't get that like rolling momentum and stability that you do with the larger tires and larger wheels over here, but it's a nice option. I mean, why not? Like it's, it's up to you to do that uh, if you want to. Again, the fenders, great utility. Hydraulic disc brakes give you a lot of stopping power, whether you're wet or not. And having a smaller rotor up front means if you park this in a bike rack, it's still vulnerable. You don't want to touch this because it can squeak and it can mess up the pads. You don't want to bend it or it's going to go rrr, 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 like every time it passes the, the pad. But these are these are decent, you know, Tektro. These are three finger levers. Easier to pull both the front and rear because there's not a wire that's stretching that runs all the way to the back. I uh, love the kickstand position. See, it's out of the way. And I mentioned again, those 165 millimeter crank arms. I love these Welgo pedals. They're aluminum alloy platform. They're very sturdy. They give you good traction, but if you slip off, you could scrape your shin a little bit more. So this is my preference as a more advanced rider. You could swap those for like 10 bucks if you wanted plastic ones or something a little bit, a little bit more tame, um, but I wouldn't. Uh, personally, I'm, I think this is set up like just right. Uh, just the way that it's, you know, the, the cables are all nicely routed and they internally routed too. You can see they enter the frame down here. They stay pretty out of the way. There's a quick disconnect for that headlight up here. So everything's been pretty thoroughly like vetted. This wasn't just slapped together or converted. It's fully purpose built, meant to be an electric bike. I like that there's also an alloy chain guard on the outer side of the chain ring up front. So, you know, if you come into contact with a curb or something, you know, we've even got a chain cover, so your pants or your skirt or whatever, they're not gonna touch that chain, they're not gonna get snagged and stuff. It doesn't have a full guide, so the chain could maybe pop inward, but actually I was looking at the metal support struts for this, the little cover, and it looks like that acts as almost a guide. So it's just really clean drivetrain, really nice. Uh, and then back here, this is what I was talking about, there's no derailleur, but there is this little Nexus shifter cable thing going on. So, you know, you still wanna be kinda careful. Um, yeah, and then 13 gauge spokes, a little bit thicker in the rear and in the front, actually. So that's kind of cool. You know, you're going to be seen from the sides, the front, uh, easy to approach. I'm excited to uh, hop on this thing and do a ride, but I want to, I think this would, can you help me pull the, the, yeah. the seat off real quick here? Because I thought this was so cool. There's a handle. Yeah. So for people who are lifting the bike, the bike weighs about 47, 48 pounds. I weighed it with the racks and everything and so we kind of discounted those we looked up the weights and stuff it doesn't come with this frame lock which is a nice little accessory so if you're at a cafe you can just lock that and it'll be from abyss it's going to secure the rear wheel someone could pick up the bike and try to run away with it but again it's just a short stop kind of thing here's the seat so yeah there's that big handle and then it's a pro max it looked like 26 millimeters of suspension there with uh, some adjustability, maybe compression adjust at the bottom. And then the diameter on this is 28.6. So, you know, you could upgrade to like a Thudbuster or there's all kinds of yeah. other like longer travel, but keep in mind that's gonna raise the minimum saddle height by like a few inches just having that suspension. And he set it really high, which is what I like because I have long leg extension. I wanna get those full pedal strokes to demo this for you guys. Uh, I think the next thing to talk about is is the charger oh boy we keep hitting my head there's these branches um so this is the charger it's a very basic like two amp but it only weighs 1.1 pounds very easy to bring along these are all the tools that come with the bike including some touch-up paint it's an aluminum alloy frame so you're probably not going to have a problem with rust or anything like that which is really nice even the fork also aluminum everything here um aluminum alloy when when this ships to people it seems like you predominantly sell online is yeah. that right arda mm -hmm. yeah correct okay and that's part of the reason you can hit the 1599 price point yeah. Yeah, which mean, is with, phenomenal with everything that we give on the like we put on the bikes there's no other way around this um yeah we want and also it's super easy to assemble like we have videos online this one for example takes about like 10 minutes to assemble it, you just need to put on you know front mud guard front tire and then if you have if you bought the uh, racks the rear rack actually comes assembled already. You just hmm. need to put uh, screw just on bolt the, it on. Yeah, to, yeah. The you, front rack. The front wheel is quick release too, yeah, so is, yeah. that's pretty easy to do. The rear one, it's like 10 millimeter threaded because of the hub 
system and so that's nice they don't have yeah. to do that the most time time consuming part is to just uh, unwrap the old bubble wrap thing like the other, the other part <laughs> is super easy okay oh and i want to mention the warranty so these guys have i think it's one year is that the battery yeah mm -hmm. two years motor and then lifetime frame right <laughs> so you know not bad and when was the last review it was a couple years at least yeah i think three or four years ago we wow yeah, time yeah. flies so you, you're still in business you're so growing you got here. new <laughs> models so that you know yeah. for me that's like a trust thing um, nice to hear. They've got these cool uh, paneers that work with the the rack, and I, you know, right, black, red, beautiful. They're water resistant. And uh, how much are those, Arda? Um, they're fi fifty nine. Um, if you buy it from the website, but of course, if you bundle them up with the bike or whatever, it's like a discount. Buying, yeah, there's a discount on those kind of things. Yeah, and this is cool. I I was told that the rear rack's compatible with Yep Child sits, but this, this is, is also. Sports. Yeah, and it's, it says booty or something like that. <laughs> it's, got, it's funny, but poly sports and, you know, there's the connector piece at the bottom. So it's nice to know that uh, if you're a petite person, but you have, have a child, you can bring them along on the electric bike and get help climbing those hills and keeping up with a friend or something like that. Uh, so I think that's pretty good. Will you, will you take the battery off just real yeah, quick? Sure. It's always nice to see that. Um, you know, it's got the key on that side. Yeah, you just unlock it from here and then slide it upwards and that's it. Okay. And this was like six and a half or yeah. almost seven pounds, uh, 48 volt, 11.6 amp hours in this thing. That's, that's sizable. That's like a little bit above average for a compact bike like this. And there's the charging port on the right. If you go ahead and mount that again, yeah. um, see that that's going to stay out of the way of those crank arms when you're pedaling or something, you could charge that on or off the bike. If you're new to electric bikes and lithium ion batteries, I do recommend keeping them away from extreme heat, extreme cold, because that can kind of degrade the cells. You want to keep the battery from draining all the way down. I usually stop at like 15 or 20 percent. That's, you know, that's a good time to like get home and, you know, plug it in. Uh, but it's nice being able to take off 6.9 is what I think the, the battery was. That's going to make the bike even lighter. So you're in the 40 pound range um, and that's with the, the extra accessories and stuff that we talked about. Um, will you put your helmet on, Arda? Yeah, sure. I wanted to show this. <laughs> Check this out, you guys. Well, who makes this? Overrate. Yep. So what's Overrate. really cool about it, this one is you can just fold this one and then put it in your bag. Wow. It is so convenient. This is, and this is not like a promo, no one paid us to say this. I just thought it was cool and it matched yeah. his shirt and stuff and it's neat I mean, to see this. Like they can pay, I'm not. Yeah, please, we welcome <laughs> I'm not it. against it. <laughs> they, they've yeah. got some really cool accessories at the company. And you, you know, you're frequently over in like Shanghai and yeah. you're doing stuff in China with the manufacturers. Yeah, a lot of that. So you see all the yeah. newest stuff. Yeah, yeah. All the this one actually, I saw it, we saw it in Eurobike. Yeah, yeah they were kind of popular two years, last year or two years ago? Last year. Last year, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna walk through the display. Sure. So hang out here in case I have a question. Okay. But basically once the battery's mounted and it's charged up, you hold the power button for a couple seconds, it boots up, really nice compact display, looks nice, not removable, you can't really adjust the angle easily because it's it's kind of tightened down, that's standard. No USB ports or things like that, but you know, it's understandable here, that's, that's also, there's a little upgrades I see on some other bikes, but sometimes they can draw power slowly or get bumped, so it's kind of like, yeah, you know, they went with compact and simple. We have speed, we have assist levels, and then there's a little chart right here, and it goes like low, medium, or high, and that's kind of like the power, the output of the motor. So as we ride, that will change. Uh, five bars on that battery infographic, but I think the surrounding is also a bar, so there's six bars technically. And down here it says trip distance. Arda, does it always start in assist level three? Yes, it does, because um, the reason is um, we just wanted to when it's on one and people are if people do not know what the, what an e-bike is they're like well this is not assisting me too much yeah so in order to you know prevent that whole idea of it's not assisting too much we um, get all of them started at three where it's a medium level assist medium. level so that people, makes sense yeah yeah and the thing about it is these buttons are very easy to reach and the throttle like if this was in zero the throttle would be active it's not active so this is a safe way to start too if we want to do that throttle we just plus the minus key all the way down to zero and then do the do the throttle here there we go you can hear that thing going that's pretty cool uh like we were saying with Beric over there it's nice to have a throttle to get you going um and then let's see if we tap the power button it cycles through some stuff so we had trip distance right here and speed at the top if we click it once it goes to average speed click it again max speed and now look at the trip distance it goes to let's see odometer and trip time. So there's quite a bit buried in this display. If you hold the plus button for a couple seconds, see there's a little light uh, infographic there, and then the blaze light kicks on in the in the front. 
and then the rear light too i'm going to go back there and show you guys what this looks like i think it's kind of minimalist and to be honest with you it's a little bit low so it's better than no light and it's not going to get blocked by the rack but i you know i'm wearing a helmet right now from abis that has like a light built into the back i think so that's something i would think about because you are a little bit lower on this bike um, okay, so back up to the front, there's walk mode. If you press the minus key for just a second, kicks on at like, I don't know, six kilometers per hour or something like that. Pretty slow. That's nice if it's loaded up. Imagine you have your kid on there, but you're at a park. You're not supposed to ride bikes across the park if there are people around. So you use walk mode and that's going to help you, you know, again, this is like 50 pounds, just the bike. Um, and then if you want to do some of those cool settings, you double tap the power button. So right now we could change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. We tap it again, backlighting, so the brightness, we're at three, which is in, in the middle. And then off time, so it's five minutes before it turns itself off. And then down here, this is wheel diameter. I guess that's supposed to look like a W or something, 20, 20 inches, that's exactly what it is. And then, what was the B-U-U-B-E thing, Arda? Uh, this is the voltage. Uh, oh, the voltage. Battery, yeah. Oh, yeah, so we could voltage. go from 48 to 36, but yeah. if mm -hmm. you go to 36, this is a 48 volt pack. Yeah. 36 will throw an error, so we're gonna leave it at 48. Yeah. And then we go to password, and you said it was one nine. One nine, yeah. Oh, I gotta go up. Okay, so we're in. And the reason they provide that password is because some people might want to lower the speed. So 32 kilometers per hour, that's roughly 20 miles per hour. Um, but we could raise it, we could lower it, and then uh, I think you just double tap and Yeah, it, and then you're good to go. You're good to go. So we're good to go. We're gonna go yeah, on a ride? Let's do it. Let's do it, right here, buddy. Yeah, thanks, Beric. Okay guys, we're back in the parking lot. I'm hanging out with Berk and he is already on the M-Class over here. Look at yeah. this, you, you've hopped on. I noticed the seat was a little bit lower, but you said you were kind of comfortable in this position. Yes. Feeling good, you got your helmet on? You ready yeah, to do a little test ride? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's do it. Okay. And actually, I thought the the seat was lower, but I mean, he I think he just has a shorter inseam. So it's... Uh, it's working pretty well. He's getting good leg extension. Very nice with those brakes. Yeah. Looks comfortable. At first I thought you were a little low, but then I actually saw you were getting pretty good leg extension. Yeah, it's actually like that. And I like this position because when it's on the red light, you know, I can just stand on it. That's right. Yeah, you and you you can actually stand over the saddle. Yeah. And so the bike. it's like very important for me because I don't have a very long leg. So if there are people like me, I think it's important for those people too. Yeah, that is, that's a great point, Burke. And there's actually a hill over here. I don't know if you'd be willing to just throttle up it and test the, the torque sure. on the, let's, sure. let's head that way. Do you mind sharing how much do you weigh now? Uh, yeah, like in terms of pounds, I'm not sure, but let me give kg, like in the kilo, it's like 121. Okay, great. And I started with 183 plus. Wow. So, yeah, we were saying you lost a bunch of, you know, yeah. pedaling, getting your heart rate up. That's yeah, sweet. And uh, before I had like diabetes and uh, blood pressure problem, you know, our family is dealing with those things. Like my father passed away because of those things. So hmm. right now all the values come like very normal. Yeah. So, so it's helped you a lot, like to balance your health. And Yeah, it helped me a lot, a lot in my life. That's awesome. So let's go. Let's do it. Okay, we are on a hill here. Uh, Berk's just coasting down, doing those hydraulic disc brakes. And he's going to throttle up just so we can see how powerful the motor is. Again, being a mid-drive, switching it to a lower gear, you're empowering the motor. There you go. He's starting. Throttle only. Look at that. A little bit slow, you know, but it's gaining speed. Oh, man. It's all throttle. Yeah, no pedaling at all. Look at that. And yeah, this isn't the world's biggest hill. But it's definitely an incline. Like pedaling up this could be, could be a little bit of work. It's pretty sweet. Okay, guys, we've got another guest here. This is my friend Brandy, and Hi. Uh, she's gonna hop on this bike. I think it's a wonderful bike for people who are a little bit more petite. You know, you can stand over it easily. It's not as heavy. How tall are you? I'm about five three five and a three? half. Okay, and yeah, half. right. <laughs> and what's what? Do you have like an inseam measurement? Does that? Do you know your? Um, actually, I don't. No. Don't know? Okay, well, go ahead and just hop on. We've already kicked the kickstand up. There we go. Plenty of clearance. I do want to call out that the saddle is at its, like, minimum insertion height right here. So, Brandy, you you can't actually stand over the saddle without tiptoeing, right? 
Right. I need to go up on my toes just a tad to just a little bit. But you know, she, she I think she's going to be able to pedal just fine. So we're going to go over the display again real quick. We're in assist level zero, which means you can use the throttle. And as soon as you're ready, you could click plus and you could switch to pedal assist, which means the motor assists you automatically. You don't have to okay. worry about the throttle. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So this here is the throttle and without an assist, you can just sort of regulate that on your own. Yep. Yep. But then if you want to do the assist, it does it for you and you don't have to do yeah. this. Part. You just pedal and then you're just focused on shifting the gears. And we didn't right. talk about this before, but it's kind of cool. You can see what gear you're in. Two is a good one because it's right in the middle. If you wanted to be easier climbing, you could go to one, but you're going to spin faster and you can shift it standstill. Do you want to shift back to like two real quick? Perfect. Excellent. Yes. Okay. So we'll take it down to, to zero and just give it a try. I'm, I'm excited to hear what you think. All right. Here we go. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Brake test. There we go. A little bit of squeaking. I talked about this earlier. You know, they, Arda and, and his brother Burke, they've been traveling from, from LA. They drove here to do this. And I think the brakes, you, sometimes you accidentally touch them and the oils from your fingers can make them squeak a little bit. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind. But you just, I mean, this is one of your first times riding an e-bike. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's like my second time ever on an e-bike. Actually, yeah. I really enjoy it. And it reminded me of like how cool these things are. <laughs> yeah. Because it feels like and quiet. Yeah, a lot quieter than that. <laughs> but actually, yeah, it's really cool because you're able to control if you're if you're wanting to go faster or slower. Mm -hmm. And if you're going up a hill, it's way easier. But on this, this is not very hilly. It's pretty flat. But I felt like I could completely control how fast I wanted to go yeah. and how much effort I wanted to put forth or not. Especially with this manual throttle thing that got going on. Yeah which is cool. I like that. But I think it was also nice if you're sort of cruising along for a longer distance than this, it might be nice to just have that assist Take automatically a break. on. Yeah. It's cooling off now, but today w was kind of hot, right? Like the sun was shining. And if you're with a friend and you're like, I just want to chill out, like the throttle's yeah. kind of nice. Yeah, that is really nice. I get really fatigued in the heat sometimes actually. And so it's really nice if I'm out working out or running or riding a bike, it can get really challenging. This would be really helpful to have actually in the heat. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Brandy. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> we had a wonderful time just cruising around Old Town Fort Collins. They just planted these beautiful flowers. And I'm gonna hop on the M class here and just do some just some different throttling. I actually unlocked it so it could go a little faster. I wanted to see what the pedal cadence would feel like. And we're gonna ride on streets. So class three on streets, that's allowed. Whoop. Here we go. I'm pretty stable here, even though it's got the smaller wheels. Sometimes they feel a little bit squirrely, but these ones are they're holding up all right. Arda's back there on the W class. Hey, it's very much like that. Yeah, very similar. She had one very of the, the new Belgium bikes. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a really similar frame. We were just a minute ago, we were over at uh, New Belgium Brewery, which is you just were. up the street. What did you think? It looked great, but it would look better if you were to have some drinks. Right, right. <laughs> we met this guy and he was like, electric bikes. He was so <laughs> stoked. He was like, where's the motor? Whoa. Uh, it was yeah. just a lot of fun. You know, Fort Collins is definitely a bicycle town. Uh, it's neat to get around quickly and efficiently like this. Maybe we'll, we'll just head back that way, back to yeah. the bike trail. And then I'll turn it back to, uh, I'll limit it. So we're following the rules here and stuff. And that'll be great. Actually, we, I think we can pass these cars a little bit and yeah, get up to the bike lane. Here we go. This is some of the new development. So Union over there, that used to just be an empty lot. There's the train tracks. This is also new. So the Cash, which is like Cash La Poudre, the river that we're about to, to run into up here. Really nice, awesome restaurant if you ever come downtown. more cyclists. This is all new. Really beautiful building. 
And then here's the pooter. I'm gonna hop up on the sidewalk so you can see it. Hey guys, uh, so you're gonna be able to see the chain ring and hear the motor. It starts and stops really quickly. It's pretty fluid, very natural. I find myself wanting to use the twist throttle to override pedal assist at times, but I feel like that's just because, you know, it has a throttle and I'm like, oh, a little bit more power. It's nice to have a throttle at all. You just have to go down to zero to use it. You know, this climbed pretty well with Burke earlier. I did notice that with only three gears, when I try to go above 20, I start to spin pretty quick. So even if you activate the motor to go to 28, you might not be able to keep up with pedaling. And it's nice to have the throttle in that case. So it's, it's kind of cool. There's a, there's a good setup here. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. It's gotten a little bit windy. We're going to cut through the trees in a minute and you'll see some beautiful scenery, I think. Listen for those fenders and stuff as we ride. I feel like the bike's been pretty quiet, but you know, they, they do have that like kind of aluminum reinforcement thing going on a little bit nicer than average. Pretty beautiful, right? It is really beautiful. Nice to get out here and just see the see the trees and stuff. Yeah. This is what I was talking about before. You know, you you turn and the basket doesn't turn, which can be a little confusing at first, and the light doesn't go with you. But the upside is that this is really sturdy. It's not going to dump out. You know, when you park and the handlebar flops to the side like that. And you know, this does not have a double leg kicks in as single side, but it is adjustable. So I, I just feel like for what it is, this is actually a pretty capable little cargo bike at a really good price. Some of the bike trails and stuff over there. Just really beautiful. And I'm just using the throttle right now. So that's made it really easy, real stable pedaling. Bike path. Niner, that was a Niner bike, another local company. And there is New Belgium, they make a fat tire. You can see their sign. It's pretty uh, iconic cruiser bikes. Sweet, great place to come, chill out, have a drink, play a game of, uh, what's that called? Yeah, <laughs> gonna take a picture? This is awesome. We'll keep going a little further and see what else we can find. But this has been this has been fun. I'm I you know, we're having fun. I've tried to go deep on this bike and be and critique you know some of the trade offs. But I actually think they've done a, a really good job. You know the, the trade off being there is some assembly required. They only sell online versus dealer. But high quality parts and it's actually fairly comfortable. Like with the the saddle, the suspension post, and then these tires. It's I've been having a good time. My back isn't sore. This is great. So our ride brought us to Old Town Fort Collins. We got the fountain here, the bikes of course, and then this gentleman playing the piano. Just thought that was so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Hey, thanks, what was your name? I'm Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Dude, what was the song you're playing? That was Jan Tiersen, First Rendezvous off of uh, their Goodbye Lennon soundtrack. That was amazing. Yeah, thank yeah, thank you. you. This yeah. guy was about to leave and we were like, can you play a little bit longer? I'm happy to play one more song. We Jan really Tiersen. appreciate Check it, out. man. Yeah. Have, a, have a great day. Yeah, well, thank you. Cheers, guys. This is sweet, man. 
Arda, thank you so much for Welcome. for hanging out, yeah, like coming all the way pleasure, here. Yeah. This is great. It's fun, right? Like the kids are playing yeah. in the fountain, the dogs. The dog is dogs the best like, part. What's good? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> 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 this is fun you know obviously like we're drinking the kool-aid a little bit here but bikes are so much fun because you can just pull over we didn't have to worry about parking we're getting a little exercise yeah. and stuff enjoying the weather uh it got a little windy and we didn't have a problem right because we you got the electric assist yeah. for the full written review on the m-class for more of the aerial rider electric bikes i'll see you back at electricbikereview.com yes uh, all the measurements and stuff much. Yeah. Have fun out there, you guys. Ride safe and love each other. There he is. Thank you. So watching. It's like trying to dive down into the.